In its 57-year history, Glacier National Park had not recorded a single fatal bear attack despite thousands of encounters. However, on one famous night in 1967, two campers lost their lives when two different bears attacked separate campsites a mountain range apart. This is the infamous story of the Night of the Grizzlies. Nestled along the Canadian border in the northwest corner of Montana lies Glacier National Park. First opened in 1910, the park covers more than 1 million acres or 4,000 square kilometers of rugged natural beauty unrivaled anywhere else in the world. The park by 1967 was attracting almost 1 million guests each year. Many came for the 700 miles of hiking trails Although equally as alluring, however, was the park's most notorious resident, the North American brown bear, more commonly known as the grizzly. Although their numbers and range have dramatically reduced, an isolated population remains strong at Glacier. With its prodigious size and power, the grizzly bear has been feared, admired, and even despised throughout the ages. But in the park's 57 year history to 1967, there had been no recorded deaths from a bear attack. The park emphasized the dangers of feeding bears and placed numerous signs around the park as a reminder. In private, however, according to several park rangers at the time, management took very few steps to stop and in some cases turned a blind eye to the practice. The more bears near the chalets, the more guests that came to see them. On the night of Friday, August the 11th, 1967, a dry thunderstorm rolled across northwest Montana. More than 100 lightning strikes would start several fires across many areas of Glacier. Park services knew the storm would bring a tough weekend ahead. They had no idea, however, it would be for entirely different reasons than expected. On the morning of August the 12th, East Glacier Lodge workers 18-year-old Roy Ducat and his 19-year-old girlfriend Julie Helgeson hitched a ride along the Going to the Sun Road to spend the weekend at Granite Park Chalet. At an altitude of more than 6,500 feet, or more than 2,000 meters, the Granite Park Chalet is one of the most popular and inaccessible places at Glacier. Once reaching Logan Pass by road, the couple traversed the Highline Trail, a breathtaking six-hour hike to the chalet. The same journey had been undertaken earlier that day by a large group of 36, led by Junior Park Ranger Joan Devereaux, leading her first overnight expedition to Granite Park Chalet. The consequences of this large group meant the chalet, like most nights that summer, was completely full. Roy Decat and Julie Halgerson, upon reaching the packed chalet, decided they would set up at a small campsite roughly 500 yards down the mountain. Meanwhile, 8 miles or almost 13 kilometers to the far side of the Livingston mountain range, 19-year-old Michelle Coons and her four friends, Paul Dunn, Denise Huckle and Rayan Ron Nozick were hiking towards Trout Lake to spend the weekend. The party had been warned earlier that day about a bear acting strange near the berry patch at Trout Lake. However, undeterred, the group pushed on towards their destination. With plenty of water, thick forest and an abundance of berries, the lake was considered somewhat of a bear haven. The group set up camp near the edge of the lake before trying their luck at some fishing. During the late afternoon, the group spotted a grizzly bear combing the edge of the lake. They weren't aware at the time, but that same bear was a scrawny old sow who had been causing havoc all season. Instead of running at the sight of humans like the other bears in the park, 
The old bear had been reported to have stalked guests at a cabin, ransacked a campsite, and even harassed some Girl Scouts. However, despite this behaviour, no definitive action had been taken by park services. Eight miles away and thousands of feet above, guests at the Granite Park Chalet enjoyed dinner and some beer watching before settling in for a night of sing-alongs. 500 yards away at the small campsite, Roy DeCat and Julie Halgerson settled in for the night. At around midnight, Roy was awoken by the whisper of Julie telling him to play dead and the ominous sight of a giant bear towering over top of him. With its size and power, the bear picked Roy up and threw him across the campsite before jumping on top of him, biting into his shoulder, back and legs, causing the 18-year-old the most excruciating pain he had ever felt in his life. All park employees are taught that, in the event of a close encounter with a grizzly bear, playing dead could save your life, and in Roy's case, this would prove to be true. The attack on Roy was now over, however, it was the beginning of a new horror as he heard the heartbreaking cries of Julie being pulled into the tree line by the angry, deranged bear. Desperate to help his girlfriend, he searched for his flashlight in the hope of scaring off the bear. However, it was at this point he realised his left arm had been badly severed and struggling to even move, he was powerless to help. Help, however, was not long coming. The noise from the struggle had attracted the attention of campers further up the hill. Using a flashlight in an SOS pattern, they attracted the attention from those still awake at the chalet. As the shouts from the balcony asked what was wrong, the campers replied back there'd been a bear attack. Junior Park Ranger Joan Devereaux immediately radioed park headquarters requesting medical supplies and an armed ranger. A group of volunteers made their way down to the campsite where a barely conscious Roy Ducat pleaded with them to go find Julie. However, with the safety of the volunteers in mind, the junior park ranger insisted the group wait for armed assistance before searching for Julie. Roy Ducat was carried to the chalet where, as luck would have it, three doctors and a nurse were spending the night. Helicopter pilot John Westover and senior park ranger Gary Bunny, aided by flashlights and improvised fire, managed to make a challenging night landing near the chalet. A stable but badly wounded Roy Ducat was evacuated into the chopper, and as the helicopter climbed back into the night sky, the lights of the search party, now led by armed ranger Bunny, could be seen descending into the tree line in their search for Julie. Following the faint spots of red on the foliage in front of them, the search party, armed with a single rifle and a few flashlights, managed to find Julie just a few hundred yards from the campsite. With punctured lungs and unable to move, Julie, however, for the time being, was still alive. The doctors at the chalet tried in vain to save the 19-year-old. Father Tom Connolly performed a baptism, and as he gave Julie the sacrament of last rites, her hand slowly let go of his as she sadly became the first person to lose their life to a bear attack at Glacier. However, she would not be the last that night. At around 4am on the far side of the Livingston mountain range, the problem bear from the day before paid another visit to the small group at Trout Lake. As the bear crept up and started rummaging through their campsite, all five campers initially played dead. However, as the bear ripped the sleeping bag from Paul Dunn, he jumped up and ran, startling the bear, which retreated back to the tree line. However, it would only be a few moments until the bear returned. Denise Huckle and Ron Nozick jumped up and ran toward the lake, once again startling the bear, which retreated once more. When the bear again returned to the camp, the others pleaded with Ray Nozick and Michelle Coons to quit playing dead and run. Ray would run, Michelle would not. She would never again be seen alive. The four survivors climbed trees for safety, where they would remain until morning. 
When daylight finally came, the four hiked to Lake McDonald Station to report the incident. The news of the second deadly bear attack made headlines across America. How in 57 years of the park's history could there be no fatal bear attacks, then suddenly two in one night? In the immediate aftermath of the tragedies, park rangers were ordered to destroy any bear they found at Trout Lake and Granite Park Chalet. Two likely innocent bears were shot and killed the day after the incidents, while the bear confirmed to have been responsible for the death of Michelle Coons and the one likely to have killed Julie Halgerson were both killed a day later. Examination of the culprits revealed glass embedded in the gums of the bear at Trout Lake. While the one at Granite Park Chalet had badly injured pads, one possible cause for their aggression. While no one will ever be sure, several theories have been put forward to try explain the incident. Jack Olson, author of the bestseller Night of the Grizzlies, put forward his explanation in his book, explaining that because of increased human presence in the wilderness areas and decreased habitat for the bears to live in, a critical tipping point had been reached in the summer of 1967. The park itself came under fire on a number of points, including accusations they turned a blind eye to the feeding of the bears in hopes of attracting more guests to the park, as well as taking little to no action following multiple complaints of the Trout Lake bear acting aggressively in the past. As a result of the attacks, the first modern bear management policies were implemented at the park, including bear-proofed garbage cans, separating campsite cooking areas from the sleeping areas, and limiting the number of campers at the park. Mm -hmm.